Hey guys, today I'm filming my monthly makeup ranking for October. It's gonna be a really long video. I have about 20 products to review for you guys and I'm not gonna remember the numbers of everything so I'm gonna have it on the screen as well as the name of the product and the shade. And I will have everything linked down below. I'm gonna try to breeze through this and just give you some summed up thoughts. Some of these products are formulas that I've tried before but are new shades to me so I figured I would just throw them in. Like always, I do also have a favorite fine and fail category for this month. There were five products that fell into the fail category which is more than normal. And my least favorite product of the month would be the Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Foundation. It did not give much coverage. It looked very greasy on the skin but it emphasized all of my lines, especially the lines in my forehead. And I feel like usually I have an issue with really matte foundations, but not really dewy ones. I feel like dewy ones can be a little bit more forgiving, but no, it looked awful. When I powdered it, it looked terrible and it was just a no. So that one went back. And for the next product, I filmed a first impression on my phone and I need to find a way to put the clips together and then upload it to Instagram. I don't know, I, can you upload to Instagram from your computer? Because I don't think I would be able to save that video on my phone and upload it from my phone. I think that would take forever. So I need to, to look into that a little bit more, but that would be the Tower 28 Sunny Days Tinted SPF. And I hit the shade number 10, Large Mint. It was a nice yellow shade. I do believe that it oxidized on me and it was buildable to like a light medium coverage, but I have never been that dewy in my life. It looked awful on me. And once I set it with powder, it looks a little bit better, but I didn't love it. And you guys know I'm a full coverage person anyway, but I feel like Tower 20 is one of those cool girl brands. I want to be a cool girl, so I tried it. It didn't work for me. And if I'm wanting something more lightweight, I would rather go with the Fenty Beauty Eavesdrop Skin Tint. I know that is like a very polarizing product, but it worked really well for me. And I would rather wear that if I'm wanting like a lighter coverage kind of look. So the Tower 28 Sunny Days product went back as well. The next fail for me would be the Beauty Bakery Lemon Bar face palette which has a bronzer contour and a highlighter in it the highlighter formula was very nice but it was like lemon -y. if you've seen like an actual lemon bar that is what it looked like it was very yellow and icy it still worked on my skin the reason this is going back is because of the formula of the bronzer and the contour shade just tapping my brush in was like <gasps> it was a mess there was product everywhere i felt like it blended a little bit patchy on the skin and i have plenty of bronzers that work just fine for me so while i only got that for like nine dollars during 21 days of beauty it was just awful like a powder explosion i have not really liked the things i've tried from beauty bakery so i need to just like give up and stop trying and uh that was awful and then the next thing is something that if i purchased it it would have been returned for sure but it was decluttered to me by my friend jean i tried this Dominique Cosmetics palette in a video recently where I was testing out some influencer beauty brands. I only have two of those products to talk about today because I used these a couple of times and I'll have that video linked in the card. So this is the Dominique Cosmetics Latte palette, something I had always wanted. I was so excited when Jean sent this to me. So you have three shimmers, the rest are mattes in here. The mattes I think are nice. They're pigmented, they blend well, these shimmers are not good. They almost sealed, like you can tell I used this one, it almost sealed up on itself. It did not look very metallic on the eyes. It's so disappointing. And while I think the mattes are good, I have all of these mattes in other palettes. So I'm not going to reach for this palette just for those mattes. So I'm going to pass that one on to a friend. And then my fifth and final fail would be something that I thought I liked it first and then after wearing it a couple of times I realized it's just not for me and this is the Jouer Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation. I have the shade Warm Ivory. It's a frosted bottle. It is not as light as it looks here but it is like a little light for me. This is very yellow. I do have a really yellow skin tone but it looked a little crazy on me. I did wear this in my last video and this 
emphasize every single hair. All of the little like peach fuzz hairs I have here, I have here that I need to take care of. Emphasize all of them. Settling my forehead wrinkles really badly. I apparently have like a lot of clogged pores on my nose, accentuated all of those, every blemish, every pore, and I had primer on underneath. And once I set it with powder, it looks much better, but then it still looks mask-like, which you guys know I'm not afraid of full coverage. But no, I think that the NARS Soft Matte Complete Coverage Foundation looked really beautiful on my skin and was very full coverage and a good shade match for me. And while I got this on a good discount, I think I would pick the NARS over, I know I would, I know I would pick the NARS over this. So no, I just did not feel confident about my skin. And usually when I'm wearing a full coverage foundation, like I think it looks good, but this did not. So that is going to go back as well. So all five of my fails are leaving my life, which I guess usually happens, but yeah, I said there are more fails than normal. In the fine category, I have a lot of products. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 products here that are fine that I'm gonna be hanging on to, but I'm not obsessed with. The first piece of that I got is a freebie. This is the Buxom Powerline Plumping Lip Liner. And this is in the shade Hush Hush Henna. And this is a re-release so buxom used to have these like jumbo lip liners that were in a sharpenable pencil i tried one of those in the past very drying and i believe they've gotten rid of those and these are the new version of that and i love that they did that so this is like an angled thick lip liner kind of like the benefit goof proof brow pencil so i like this because it is easy to line and fill in your lips completely with this now it is very pigmented it's not super dry, but a little more dry than I prefer, but I'm used to the ColourPop lip liner formula, but I don't think this is as dry as like a MAC lip pencil is. So this is a very nice formula. It's a pretty color, but nothing super crazy special. I have another lip liner in here that I have ranked much higher because of formula and color, but this is not bad, but I won't be buying any, but I'm super glad I got to try it in that sample. And also this might be something that I pan and my thoughts could change at some point, but that's all that's in here. So that'd be something super easy to, to pan. So I'll think about it for next year. Next, this is ranked very low and I am surprised and disappointed. This is the Natasha Denona Peak Palette. So this was made for BoxyCharm, but all these shades are available in other palettes. This is something that I got for I think maybe like 20 to $24, but you can buy this on the pop-up shop for like 10 bucks now, totally worth it for 10 bucks. For the 24 I paid for it, not really. And it's because of the colors. The quality is great, classic Natasha Denona quality. This I thought would be a good setting shade. It's actually too dark and too peachy for me, so I cannot use it to set. I can use it to kind of buff out. I was most excited about this shade, but it's actually more orange on my skin than it looks here. I thought this was more of like a muted salmon shade and it is, but there's like more orange in it than I wanted. The shimmer is my favorite shade by far. I think it is so beautiful. It's the color shine. So I definitely will reach for this, for this shade. I don't really wear dark browns, but that applied nicely on my lower lash line, blended out pretty well. Like the formula of all of these are great. It's just, I bought this because I was able to get Natasha Denona for affordable price, but no, I, unless you can get it for that like 15 and under, I'd say no, you guys absolutely have these shades in your collection and I don't think you need to have them in a Natasha Denona five pan. If all these came in Metropolis or like a larger palette, which again, they all do, but not all together. But you know what I'm saying? If this was in a larger palette along with 10 other shades, totally, but on its own, unless you can get it for 15 or under, I say pass. You definitely have those shades. Next is something that I'm really disappointed in. That's the Jouer Cream Shadow Stick in Rose Gold. This definitely looks a little bit more pinky on the eye. I wore this several times this month and it's a little bit larger. So I had a tough time getting it in the inner corner of my eye without getting it up too high, but you know, I was able to work with that. It is very smooth. And it is pigmented, but it's like a little waxier 
than the Laura Mercier or the Bobbi Brown, which I feel like glide on effortlessly but are fully opaque. This one I feel like I had to go over a couple times. And this is something I would not use on its own. On the eye, it doesn't look that metallic. It just looks shimmery. So I think the Laura Mercier shadow sticks are way more impressive. So I would love to use this up in the future, but I'm not gonna buy any more Jouer shadow sticks. Laura Mercier is still my favorite. Next is a formula that I've tried and love, but this is a new shade to me. It is the ColourPop Creme Gel Liner and the shade Red Rock, which is a matte terracotta shade. And this is very pretty. I didn't get a ton of use out of this just because of the other eyeshadows that I had picked for this month. I absolutely love this eyeliner formula. A lot of people do not. This is a very misunderstood product. This is perfect for the waterline and the lower lash line because it is going to set. It is not going to smear or run or anything but this is not good for the upper lash line because it is going to tug and drag and who likes that but on the lower lash line on the waterline it is perfect so super happy to have that shade i think i wore it with the peak palette and i think it worked out very well with those shades next is something that i have worn twice this is the ColourPop aries quad so i did film a full face of makeup revolution video and i used this shadow in there and then i also showed you a look with this that i had done on my instagram for thanksgiving dinner with my family so the shades in here are very beautiful they are very pigmented the shimmers are very pigmented as well. They have a nice metallic finish to them. The mattes, very pigmented, blend nicely. I was very impressed with how well that one blended. And to me, again, it's more of a color thing. I still like this. I think it's very pretty, but I wanted the shades to be a little bit different. Again, I was hoping that this shade in the Aries would be a little more similar to this. Again, a little bit more salmon-y where it just looks like a burnt orange on the eye but i really like this brown surprisingly because it does have some more red in it orange in it it's a little rosier than just like a regular dark brown and i especially like the lighter shimmer i think i'm good with this though i was tempted to buy more of the zodiac quad but i think i'm good with this one i like it i just don't love it as much as i thought and again it's more of a color thing than the formula thing i also don't know why i have a shadow on me today and i don't otherwise it must be the position of my light so i apologize for that hopefully it doesn't drive you too crazy next is something that was in that influencer video this is the persona bronzer stick in the shade dune it is the lightest out of the three shades and a ton of people had said that this was very orange and it is warm tone but i am wearing this today and i think it looks quite nice now i do have a warm undertone in that video i show you how i apply it so i apply face primer then i hit this in the hollow of my cheek on my hairline. Then I blend out my e.l.f. small stipple brush, put on foundation. Then I will take that same e.l.f. small stipple brush and rub it on the top of this product and then just apply a little bit more, go over the edges with my sponge to help blend it in. And I really like this. This is a very pigmented formula, but it is very smooth. I don't want to call it thin because that sounds bad, but it's not greasy it's like balmy very easy to blend out i like this a lot so yes i would prefer for the color to be a little bit more neutral but i really like this i will definitely be getting a lot of use out of this next year and i'm happy that i have been over the past couple months because i was panning the one from benefit that i have been using cream bronzer more because i do want to next year try to pan a liquid and cream bronzer not this one i have some older that i want to work on but really like this i got it for a great price and i definitely recommend that product i liked it a little bit more than i thought or at least i think the color worked for me better than i initially thought it would next is a formula that i've tried before and loved but this was a new shade to me this is the tarte amazonian clay blush and quirky i am using this today a very very pretty shade i'm definitely going to keep this around in my collection this is a matte finished blush not all the shades are but this one is i think that these last really nicely on the skin i think that i don't have as much trouble with the minis as i do the full sizes i would say don't swatch them with your fingers because it seems like it dries out the blush at least that's what happened to mine in the past so i try not to really swatch them but they perform really well and they have a lot of great classic shades so i am happy to have this one and these little mini blushes will last me forever i'm never going to hit panel blush but i really like that shade happy to have it 
Next, I have a lot of tinted lip balms and they're all ranking one after the other. I think honestly that they're all great. I like them all. I don't have like a major preference between them. So, you know, keep that in mind. But the bottom of these three would be my MAC Glow Play lip balms. I did receive another shade in PR from Look Fantastic that I reviewed previously, but I did purchase two more shades. I got Floral Coral and Sweet Treat which is a nude color. I was really worried about that one not showing up on me, but it did. So this is Floral Coral. This is Sweet Treat. And I think these are nice. Out of these three, I would say that this is the thickest formula. And I would say that it is decently hydrating. I'm not gonna use any of these instead of a balm. I'm going to use them instead of a lipstick, but they are nice and hydrating, really pretty shades, give a really beautiful shine to the lips. I like these, I would not buy them full price, but on sale, I do think that they are good. Next, I would choose the Persona E Balm. This is in the shade Meditate, they have three colors. This is the light peachy nude, and this one has a little bit more color than the MAC shades, and this is a little bit thinner, slippier of a formula, but not too badly. I feel like for things that are too thin and slippery, it actually dries my lips out. I don't think this does, but I, again, would not use this instead of a lip balm. I don't think it's that hydrating, but I do like this for an easy everyday lip color. Again, it does have some nice shine to it as well. I think the MAC might be a little shinier. And then my favorite of the three formulas would be the Rare Beauty Dewy Lip Balm in the shade Thankful. This is just a little deluxe sample I have. So again, maybe something that I would pan next year, maybe, maybe with that Buxom lip liner. And this is a really pretty shade and you can see it has the most pigment out of all of them. This also has some nice shine. This is also a very thin formula. So it does feel comfortable on the lips, but I do feel like it disappears quickly and isn't as hydrating because it is thinner. I am not gonna buy any more shades of any of these, but I would love to you know, use these up. I do think they're a nice product. Again, I am really just trying to find lip products and lip formulas that I love. I keep wanting to try. This is like cool girl makeup to me. I keep wanting to try it and they're like, that aesthetic is so different from my preference but I do really like those. Then I have three more products in the fine category, but I like these a lot. The first would be this mini set of the Kosas Wet Set Lip Oils. These are their three nude shades. I'm so happy they came out with this set. I think it was $25. It's no longer available at Sephora, unfortunately. But the shades in here are unhooked, unzipped, and unbuttoned, and Unhooked is just a straight up cream. Unzipped has very little pigment, mostly shimmer. And then unbuttoned has enough pigment to it, but there is a little shimmer in that one as well. I'm wearing this today. I don't feel like it feels like a lip oil. It is definitely not sticky upon application. I would say that it is not very long lasting, which you have to expect with lip oil and it does feel slightly tacky as it wears off. Again, I really enjoy these. I'd be happy to use them up as of right now and not repurchase. I also am trying to test out a bunch of other lip oils to see what is my favorite. So far, the Rowan liquid lip balm is my favorite. I like these more than the Sigma lip oils. I felt like that one was really thick and a little sticky. I like these better than that. I eventually think I want to do like a battle of the lip oils, but I have a few more coming to me that I'm very excited to try, but these are very nice. Super happy to have them. Next is something that people have really been going crazy over. These are the KVD Dazzle Sticks. This is the shade Electro Bolt, and I'm only going to buy the shade. I've seen some of the other swatches, seen them in person, and I think even Laura May Beauty has a couple shades, and I think that they're not all created equally. I could be wrong, but I'm happy just having this one. It is very beautiful. It is like a golden copper color. It's a very creamy shade, and I applied this directly from the product, and then I also used some of it on a brush to get precise, and I felt like it did get a little bit melty, which is not necessarily bad. It is a little tacky, so it did transfer into my crease a bit because I have hooded eyes, but this didn't crease really badly on me. I didn't have any fallout. This is a very, very unique formula. I'm very happy KVD came out with something 
that was so well received. So happy to have this one, a unique product, a pretty color, but I'm not going to buy any more. And then my last fine, as I'm wearing on my eyes today, this is the Natasha Denona Cranberry Palette. And the shades you have in here would be Nude, Blossom, Botanic, Sakura, and Daisy. I like these two shimmers the best. I think the mattes are really nice as well. Even this pink shimmer, I just don't really go for pinks, but I like the look that I created. I wore it earlier today. I liked that look a lot. All these shimmers are very pigmented, very metallic. This copper color actually has like a pink duochrome to it that you don't notice until you put it on. I am wearing nude on my lid today. I love it. It's a beautiful, slightly like topier champagne. Really pretty. I like these mattes as well. The red I'm wearing on its own today. You can see it's a very pinky red. I really didn't know what transition color to use with it. And I wish that I had one, but I think that this diffused and blended out very, very nicely. So super impressed with the formula. I think these colors are very pretty. I am just not creative enough to know what other shades I think would pair nicely with these, but I do not regret having this one in my collection. And I did also get this one for a really good price. I think about $24, which is half off. So for that price, totally, totally worth it. And my camera is about to overheat, so I'm gonna give it time to cool off and then we'll go over the favorites and the lighting is gonna be different just to warn you. Okay, so now we have my favorites. There are six products in this category and a lot of these are products where I've tried the formula, but these are new shades that I tried this month. So the first one is a limited edition shade that was exclusive to a set, so I'm sorry to mention that, but I just now got around to trying it and it's beautiful. This is a Buxom Full On Lip Cream in Sugar Drop. I always thought that's was kind of like a cool tone lip color but it's not I would say that is peachy but not super warm almost like a neutral peachy tone I don't know kind of reminds me of Maybelline Stone but I love this formula yes these are a little bit sticky but I do not mind them I love the tingle I love the minty scent I think these are absolutely fantastic and I loved wearing this color super happy to have that one in my collection Next is a limited edition ColourPop Lippy Pencil. This is in the shade Good and Plenty. I wore this in the video I posted before this, the ColourPop video, and I had lined my lips initially and then I actually kind of faded it in, blended with my finger and filled my lips in with it completely, put a gloss on top. This is so pretty. The ColourPop Lip Liner Formula is my favorite. It is a very creamy and some people really do not like that. So if you like a wooden lip pencil like MAC, you're not gonna like these. They're the complete opposite, but I hate the MAC ones. They just go way too dry on my lips. I think these are just incredible. And luckily, as of right now, I don't have too much trouble with my lip color fading. I mostly use lip liner just to shape out my lips because my lips are basically the same color as my skin and I don't want my lip color to get all crazy. So this is what that color looks like. It's a really pretty, like warm, rosy shade. I absolutely love this, totally recommend. Number four is something that I don't know if it is available anymore. This is the Persona Cali Glow Highlight in Laguna. They have three highlighter shades. This is the lightest. For some reason, I wanna say they got rid of this because I bought this a year ago on clearance on their web, or on sale on their website and also only has the other two shades. This is Laguna. It is a warm tone champagne and it looks a little bit more yellow in person than it does here. But because there is all of that light color in it, it does work on my skin tone, gives it a really, really pretty glow. There are other highlights that I like a little more formula wise, but I think this is really, really beautiful. Very happy to have that. And I got it for a great price. Then at number three is a Persona Super Blush in the shade Terracotta, which is made for more medium tan skin tones, but I am able to get this to work on me as well. I just go in with a light hand, a little bit of product, and a really fluffy brush, but I think it looks so beautiful. A really nice matte shade. I have all three of her matte blushes. I have not tried the mauve one yet, Caramel, but I love the simple, skinny, sleek packaging, and I would love for them to release more shades in the future. Georgia is incredible and is probably gonna be mentioned in my yearly favorite. So really, really enjoy that blush. And it has replaced Pixie Beach Rose in my collection. They're different shades, like they're not dupes, but they're in the same color family. And I just feel like reaching for that one a little bit more. 
Next for number two, this is a Sigma Cheek Duo from last holiday. It has the Corde Rosa blush, which is a single. It is also in the Corde Rosa blush palette, which I also have now, but I got this before. And I really wanted to try this out to see if I needed to keep this duo as well for the highlight. I do. This is the shade Gilded. It's a very beautiful light champagne shade. And this is not in the Glow Kissed Highlighter palette. If it was, I could probably let this go, but I really like this blush. I really like this highlight. I love that it is this little duo. It's a little bit more travel friendly and I already have it. So like if I didn't already have it, I wouldn't buy it, but I really love the quality of this. I think Sigma Cheek products are so, so good. And I am going to be filming a video with Look Fantastic shortly with some of Sigma's holiday collection, including the new Cheek Duo, and I'm so excited for that. I really, really wanna get the Cinderella Cheek Duo and the Cinderella palette, but it is always excluded from their sales, unfortunately, and I just can't pay full price for it. So I'm hoping that there will be, either the collection will go on sale itself because it won't be available anymore, or they just eventually will let a coupon work on that collection. I'm just hoping so, because now I want them all, which is crazy. Sigma does such a good job of that, though, releasing like just the right amount of products to make you want to collect them all. And then number one would be the Natasha Denona Mini Star Palette. I created three looks with this. I love them all. I especially love the look with this shade on the lid. So we have Orion, Atik, Bellatrix, Earth, and Cosmo. Now Earth, I was so irritated at first. I was like, oh, that's such a dark, like cool tone-ish brown. And I wish that you can mix these two shades to replace that dark color. But I do think that this is good because it will work for more skin tones because you can mix them. And I ended up using that one to line my lower lash line and it worked really nicely. It looked very beautiful. So that's how I use that shade. But I used this matte with all of those other shimmers. It worked so well. You guys know I love golden olives. So I really love those shades. I don't go dark very often, but I think this just looked beautiful on the eyes. Performs super, super well. So definitely recommend you guys pick up this palette. And it, again, it is so funny that I had a Natasha Denona palette at the bottom, in the middle, and at the top. And the formula is great on all of them. It is just because of the shades and my creativity. So guys, I know that this was a bit of a long video, but I am very impressed. I was able to get through like 20 things in 30 minutes. So I think that's pretty good. I am super excited to start using some new things next month to review for you guys. And I would love to hear your thoughts on all these products down in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.